Hi, welcome to this video. We're going to develop now exercises 6 to 10 of chapter 33, Principles of Economics. Remember, this is a good book of Gregory Mankiw, Principles of Economics. So let's have a look at the first questions, So, which is going to be the sixth one. For each of the three theories for the upward slope of short-run aggregate supply curve, carefully explain the following how the economy recovers from a recession and returns to its long-run equilibrium without any policy intervention. So, basically, the situation here we have natural in the y-axis, we have the price level, in the x-axis we have the quantity of output. Every time we need to uh, depict this model of aggregate supply and aggregate demand, we have the we have these three curves, which is going to be the first one, the AD0, which is going to be the aggregate demand in the short run, and aggregate supply in the short run, and the long, um, the long run aggregate supply. So then those are the curves that we are going to analyze. So the situation here is like how the economy recovers from a recession so then and uh, returns to its long run equilibrium without any policy intervention. So when we have here a recession, we assume like lower prices and lower output. So basically we can assume here a pessimism, which is going to be, for example, a crash in the stock market. So we have a shift to the left for, for the aggregate demand. So it's going to be this the aggregate demand one. As a consequence, we have in the short run lower level of prices and lower output. So when we have here this situation, basically the households cut back on their spending. So it's a decrease in consumption. Furthermore, we have like the firms, they, they put off buying a new equipment. So then the, because in this situation, oh, this should be another possibility. So here we have a decrease of prices in short run. So then, due to uh, these situations, we have a, like a lower uh, output supply by the producers because of the prices are lower naturally. Furthermore, when we have these prices that they are lower, so then we can hire like more workers. Maybe it should be like the situations. So then, this should be the next movement of the aggregate supply. So because of this, that we have like a lower prices, so I can negotiate after this movement, I can uh, negotiate uh, with lower salaries. So the producers, they have incentives to hire more, more workers. So then as a consequence, we return to the original output and then we just face lower prices from P0 to P2. Then, what determines the speed of that recovery? Well, actually the, the speed of that recovery should be represented by the decrease or the change of the demand. Um, actually, we have here a contractions of supply in the, in the, in the, in the short run. So maybe how how much time it takes this adjustment and negotiate uh, these uh, lower wages for for the workers so then the producers they can hire more people so then this adjustment of salary so we have the theory of the sticky wages and if it takes more time naturally it will be like worse seven the economy begins in long run equilibrium the one day, then one day the president appoints a new share of the Federal Reserve. The new chairman is well known for her view that inflation is not a major problem for an economy. A. How would this news affect the price level that people would expect to prevail? So then this should be the situation of the long run. So we, we are in this equilibrium with level P0 level of output Y0. Then. When we have an expectations of the prices that they will be higher in the future, well, actually the workers, they can bargain higher wages because of those prices that they will expect. So then, for this situation, 
maybe uh, we are going to face lower quantity supply. So then this is the basic equation to understand how the expected prices influences the supply. So we have that the quantity of output supply, we have here a natural level of output, which is Y0, but then we have this uh, an addition or for or a sum for this factor A multiplied by the gap of the actual price level with the expected price level. Anytime we have expected price level higher, automatically this all uh, this all um, situation, this all difference is going to be lower. So as a consequence, we're going to face a quantity of output lower. So then we are going to face a decrease of quantity of output supply for each level of prices. So then if we can represent that in our diagram, so we're going to shift the aggregate supply to the left. So as a consequence, we have something that is known as a stagflation, which is basically higher prices and lower quantity um, demand, lower quantity uh, produced, because we are going to have here a decrease in the aggregate supply provided by these higher expectations of prices. B, how would this change in the expected price level affect the nominal wage that workers and firm agree in their new labor contracts? Well, actually, this situation that we have uh, a movement of the aggregate supply to the, to the left, basically, we're going to face before higher nominees, uh, nominal wages because the expectation of the prices will be higher, so naturally the, the workers and the unions, they negotiate a better, uh, better salaries, better conditions. So in this situation, we move the aggregate supply to the left because for the producers, it's like more difficult to hire uh, workers because they are more expensive. C, how would this change in the nominal wage affect the profitability of producing goods and services at any given price level. Well, basically with this decrease, naturally, what we are facing here is like the producers, they are facing lower profitability, so they need to cut costs and they hire less people. How does this change in profitability affect the short run agri supply curve? Well, as we showed before, it moved to the left. E, if aggregate demand is held constant, how does this shift in the aggregate supply curve affect the price level and the quantity of output produced? So we have here P1, which is higher than P0, and Y1, which is lower than Y0. Do you think this Fed Sherman was a good appointment? Well, I get this conclusion is evident. With this situation that the expectation is higher, we have a contraction in the economy, and not only that, but also an increase in the prices. So for this situation, the inflation or expectation of inflation, which is higher, is really bad, bad for the economy. Seven, the economy, uh, the economy begin the long run equilibrium. Then one day the president appoints the new chair. Okay, it's always but we already <laughs> saw before. A. Explain whether each of the following events shifts the short run aggregate supply curve, the aggregate demand curve, both or neither. For each event that does shift a curve, show a diagram to illustrate the effect on the economy. A. Households decide to save a larger share of their income. So then, when we are when we are uh, saving a large share of, in our income, basically it's a shift in the demand. So we are going to basically face a decrease in consumption. So keeping the other variables constant, so we're going to have an aggregate demand shift to the left and lower prices and lower quantities in the economy. Florida orange groves uh, suffer a pro prolonged period of below freezing temperatures. Well, we know here that there's going to be a chunk of uh, supply, so then supply will be immediately affected by this, uh, by this freezing period, so then the aggregate supply will shift to the left. As a consequence, we are going to face in the short run higher prices, P1 compared with P0, and lower quantity as well um, produced. So then, Increased job opportunities overseas caused many people to leave the country. Well, 
we are we are losing uh, one factor of production so we're going to have here uh i will supply it moves to the to the left naturally in the long run aggregate supply can be moved as well but we are just here representing the the short run impact so then we have this situation of higher prices and lower quantity uh, produce nine for each of the following events explain the short run and long run effects on output and the price level assuming policymakers take no action the stock market declines sharply, reducing consumers' wealth. So then, with this situation, when we have a stock market uh, decline, well, this is going to be a shock in the aggregate demand. So aggregate demand will shift to the left, causing lower prices and lower quantities. So naturally, this is going to be the situation for, for that. But after that, naturally, because of the lower prices, and the, maybe in the medium run, the, the, the producers, they need to pay lower wages. So due to this situation, they can like take lower or higher lower workers or more uh, like cheaper workers. So then as a consequence, the aggregate supply will shift to the right, reaching the original level of Y0 just generating lower prices p2 compared with the initial one which was p0 the federal government increases in pay spending national defense remember the aggregate demand is composed by consumption investment government spending and net export in these situations the situation the uh, the government spending will be affected so then for this situation the aggregate de demand will shift to the to the right as a consequence we are facing lower higher prices and higher quantities but this to this situation that the workers they can bargain like higher salaries for the producers this could be like this could be like more complicated so for this situation the aggregate supply at the end will shift to the left for this more money that need to pay for the same workers so then the shift to the left reaching the original level of output and just higher prices p2 compared with p0 c a technological improvement raises productivity productivity so then in these situations when we have a technological improvement we ha can face here an increase in the long run aggregate supply from zero to one due to this change remember any change in the long run is provided by natural resources or a uh, capital uh, capital difference, capital stock difference, or labor labor situations like that changes. So then, for this situation, we have a, a, a shift to the to the right, and actually the short run as well. So here we have a, an increase. So as a consequence, we are going to have lower prices but higher quantities in the economy. D. A recession overseas causes foreigners to buy fewer U.S. goods. So then we have here uh, situations of the we have the exports that they are going to be immediately affected, keeping other uh, variables constant. So for this situation, the net export will decrease. So then the aggregate demand will shift to the left. As a consequence, we have here lower prices, lower quantity produced as well. Okay. So then this should be the situation just change in the prices. 10. Suppose firms become very optimistic about future business conditions and invest heavily in new capital investment equipment. Draw an aggregate demand aggregate supply diagram to show the short run effect of this optimism on the economy. Label the new level of prices and real output. Explain in words why the aggregate to quantity of output supply changes so then when we start from the equilibrium and then we start to invest more it is going to be a chalk in the aggregate demand so the aggregate demand will uh, shift to the right okay because of the component of the investment which is inside the aggregate demand and keeping the other variables constant so we're going to face higher prices and higher quantity produced. B. 
Now, now use the diagram from part A to show the new long-run equilibrium of the economy. For now, assume there is no change in the long-run aggregate supply curve. Explain in words why the aggregate quantity of output demand that changes between the short run and the long run. So, okay, here the situation of the aggregate demand is changed or is changing because of the increase in the investment. So naturally, it plays or it shifts the aggregate demand to the right. So this is basically the situation for more investment. Then why this should, uh, the aggregate supply should shift to the left? Well, actually this is provided because again, we have here higher salaries, so higher wages. So you need to pay more for the workers. So then naturally this is going to be more expen expensive to produce at the same level of price. So it shifts to the left. And then at the end of the day, we have the, the exactly the same level of output. It's just a higher level of prices. C. How much investment boom affect the long run aggregate supply curve? Explain. So change in capital stock can provide an increase in the long run aggregate supply. Because basically it's like as Korea, when we, you have investment, basically you are going to provide more capital stock usually so then you are going to have an uh, impulse or something to push your long run aggregate supply to the to the right so then you can create even higher output in the in the uh, in the long run okay so i hope it has been useful for you. You have understood better these exercises. If you maybe you you want to say something different, something is wrong. I'm more than open to hear yeah to hear you. And I really like that you are uh, getting better with these videos and you can understand better these concepts. Okay. Thank you so much. Take care and see you next video. Bye bye.